And welcome back to the Daily Wrap, everybody. It's potluck time. It's the part of the show where we go around the table and share our favorite stories of the day. Heather Hansen, you always go first. Thank you very much. Um, a Missouri Republican legislator, Representative Rick Bratton, has proposed legislation that would sort of tighten what people who get used food stamps, what they can use them for. And he says that he wants to do it based on nutrition, that they get the best nutrition, which I think is a very great idea and something that is certainly worth pursuing. He wants to ban them from using food stamps to get soda, energy drinks, chips, cookies, and that included steak and fish in his list of bans. Now, I agree wholeheartedly with the idea of trying to tighten up our food stamp program. I think that the way to do that is to start with eligibility and make sure that these people are not getting, and there it is, with your energy drink, the definition of an energy drink, and then cookies, chips, energy drinks, soft drinks, seafood, or steak. Do you mind if I just stop you there one second? Yeah. Because I'm sure a lot of people at home are thinking this right now. I get the cookies, and I get the chips, and I get everything else. When you get to seafood and steak, well, that, see, that's something that I don't know if a food stamp can really expensive. get you at least a good porterhouse or, you know, the type well, of stuff that you get. It was, I think that the idea was Fox did a big piece on a, on a gentleman who was using food stamps to get sushi and lobster, and it made a lot of people very angry because a lot of people think that there's a lot of food stamp fraud. You can argue that point back and forth, and we can't do it within the time that we have here today. Sure, sure. But, the idea, but the idea of seafood and steak has a lot of people upset that people may be using food stamps to get that. I actually take less issue with that. If that's how you want to feed your family and cut back in other ways and use your food stamps that way, that is fine with me. The other aspects of that, the ban the to, from the energy drinks and so forth, I do think if you are using food stamps for optimal nutrition for you and your family, I think that the, it's okay to have laws in place. A lot of people are taking issue with this and saying that it's up to the people who are using the food stamps what they want to eat. But ultimately, we know that sugar is a main cause of diabetes. The majority of the people who are using food stamps are also probably using a medical insurance that is being subsidized. And so so should we be paying them to you drink the soda and then end up with an illness that you then have to pay for. So I think that that part of it is fine. The steak and fish, I, I can see where you would have an issue with that because I do think there should be some choice. But I wondered whether you just think it should be free reign. No, I actually would buy a lot of what you just said. I would highlight, however, that you just made a great argument for the sugar tax. <laughs> and I have a feeling you're not a fan of the sugar tax. Well, I'm not for the, the <laughs> normal, the, the everyday well, person who is not using government money to buy their soda. But the logic is the same. Huge difference but they are and but they are because your argument made the point Rick you said make a great nanny well wait, wait. <laughs> they make they make they're, they're they're drinking sugary things they end up having to get health care you're right they get diabetes but guess what even people who are not on food stamps end up costing us all money when they get but diabetes they're not drinking the soda mm -hmm. on our dime but they but are ending up on our dime when they have the the result maybe of that. maybe not well, they are. we don't know they that. we do know that well we absolutely know that they're going to be 65 someday they're going to be on medicare and they, if they have diabetes, you and I are going to be paying for it. No getting around it. I think that when it comes to private money going towards whatever, you know, the same thing as, as smoking and so forth, people have their own decisions to make. However, when you are depending on public monies, those decisions become less in your hands. I'm not disagreeing. I'm just saying it also supports the sugar tax. Very good. Mr. Fund, you are second up. Until the 1950s, Harvard and many other Ivy League schools had an informal quota on how many Jewish students could attend their schools. Um, apparently, a group of Asian American students now believes Harvard has an informal quota on the number of Asian students who can attend. They look at 27 percent of uh, Asian students uh, applying and only about 16 percent being accepted. So they're suing and they have a new PR vehicle. An Asian student has just come forward saying, I got into medical school claiming I was black. And I had bad grades, bad scores, and I was completely rich. I was the rich kid in, in my city. And they shouldn't have hired me. They shouldn't have put me into medical school. So I think this suit is going to have some legs because I think Harvard may not lose the suit, but in the public relations world, it's going to get a black eye. Yeah. It's amazing. We were just and by the way, the screen. that guy is Mindy Kaling's His brother, brother yeah. the yes. actress. Yeah. Yeah, I, great argument. And you, everything you said, I actually agree with. Who, go figure. Somebody get the date here. I agreed with everything you <laughs> said. Uh, it's My funny. Goodness, it, what's happening? When I when I was in high school, I, I had one teacher that actually I'm not going to say who, who he is, but he said, you know what? You probably have a better shot getting into some of the schools you're applying to if you just simply say you're Latino. 
because yeah, Goncha is huge, right? Well, and, <laughs> and, who, and who is going to contradict you? <laughs> no one. Right, because exactly. they'll be accused right. of being a bigot. That's right, right, right. You know, everybody in Jersey thinks my last name is Italian because it ends in a vowel, but no, it's Spanish. And you totally could. That becomes that. Latino, yeah. and then before you know it, I'm a minority. Right. And I could get into some other schools maybe. And, and now, so just seeing that. You what know what? was I thinking? I could have gone to Stanford. Yeah. <laughs> I could have changed my it. name to Hernandez or, or whatever you want, and I still wouldn't have gotten into Harvard. Rick Hernandez. Yeah, I just yeah, don't I don't know that that would have gone. I might have been able to play baseball, though, pulling that off. It was Rick Hernandez. Explain the Jeb Bush. Uh, you just made that well, reference uh, real quick. So Jeb Bush, apparently, in filling out a voter form, he indicated that he was Hispanic, and then he said today that it was a mistake. But a lot of people are making fuss about it, especially given that Elizabeth Warren apparently said that she was an American Whoa, 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 whoa. whoa. A Florida, apparently, she said it for years. Yeah. <laughs> a Florida governor checked off a wrong box on a ballot? Yeah. Once, once, once. once. Right, because I'm saying in 2000, that even, tended to happen with Ralph I'm Nader, right? We got to go. Take a quick break, more potluck, including my own. This is The Daily Wrap, only on Newsmax TV. Yeah, welcome back to Daily Wrap. I'm Joe Conchin. If you're just joining us, we're in the middle of our potluck where we're sharing our favorite stories of the day. Rick Unger, what did you bring to dinner tonight? So the uh, Atlanta Federal Reserve tells us today that they are changing their projections for the first quarter of 2015 to show zero growth in the United States. This gets me thinking about what's going on here. What is wrong? You had steady hiring up until this month, very nice uh, levels. You had cheap gasoline, which is supposed to stoke the economy because it powers consumer spending. You have allegedly falling unemployment. You have low mortgage rates, which should be spurring home ownership. All of these good things are happening, and we have zero growth. When you say growth, is this GDP you're talking about? Yeah, okay. yeah, they're looking at zero percent. And usually, which a healthy is, number is around between three and four. Well, and we've been kind of chugging along at two, which is not that exciting, but better than it was, you know, in a recessionary okay. time. So, what's going on here? Well, obviously, bad weather does play a role. You know, some will tell you actually the White House was trying to sell the idea last week that it was very much the result of bad weather. It plays a part. I don't think you can blame it all on bad weather. But there is something that people don't want to acknowledge that I think we have to start acknowledging in a very big way. I uh, spent some time yesterday with a friend of mine named Art Bilger, who was becoming a leader in getting the point across, not only to the leadership in this country, but now to all Americans, that we are looking at a situation in 20 to 30 years where their technology is going to take over an enormous amount of jobs. I mean, an enormous amount of jobs. What does that mean? You're going to have all of these people who also will be living longer because medical technology keeps advancing in great steps how long we live. What are we going to do with all these people? We are already seeing this take place. And it's fun to blame a president. It's fun to blame a Congress, blame a party, blame whoever you want to blame. But the reality is we've been hearing this for many years that the day would come where robots could replace humans. We're there. It's happening. And we have to face up to it. And we have to, here's the big word, folks, educate people to make a living in that environment. We are not doing it. You want growth in this country, you better get serious about education. So Rick, are you, are you saying also, besides the educational part, that you now endorse death panels? No, <laughs> never. <laughs> it was just right there. Death panels were so just close. never real. No, right. I am not. I don't want to kill everybody. I want them <laughs> to be able to make a living and support their families. Yeah, I mean, I don't disagree that the, the idea of technology taking over more and more jobs is part of the problem. I think there's a lack of confidence that explains those numbers as well. And especially in, you know, we're not going to have time to get into an Obamacare conversation, but people don't know what their health care costs are going to be right now. They don't understand it. They haven't wrapped their right. arms around it. And they think they're afraid to spend any money in fear that they won't have it for when I, they need it. I honestly don't think that's it. I think there are other factors, but that could be something part of it. I you know where there could be an economic boom now? Where? The villages down in Florida. Because you keep, keep people alive and everybody's getting older. Well, that's true. That's except, the investment except we have to they've make. they've got to have money to pay for their rooms. Right, good point. Yeah. I plan on retiring in Del Book of this. Education, stuff. baby. Okay, very good. Education. Anyway, I guess it's my turn. So, as predicted, by the way, on this network, on this show, on several occasions, I said Kentucky wasn't going to win the national championship, and I was right. 
They were beat by Wisconsin on Saturday night. Great game. Came down to the wire. Rick is pointing at himself. Go ahead, speak. I have Wisconsin. You have Wisconsin winning the whole thing in your pool? Yes, I do. Oh, okay. Well, yes, I do. Very good. So Rick felt the same way as well. <laughs> Still, Kentucky was heavy favorites to win the whole thing. They were 38-0 going into the semifinal at Indianapolis on Saturday night before things fell apart against a very good Wisconsin team. It looked every bit as good as the Wildcats. And then something happened that always seems to happen in these situations. There were riots in Lexington and plenty of arrests. And hundreds of thousands, look at that, my goodness, there is, uh, wow, there's nothing really more you could say. I believe it was a Randy Moss jersey being burned for no apparent reason. Uh, but yeah, overall 29 arrests, uh, about a billion fires, hundreds of thousands of dollars in damage. No one looks terribly upset that the Wildcats lost. In fact, it looks like one hell of a party. Uh, but still, here, here is my rant, here is my point. How do the police not know this is coming? There are only four-point favorites. There was a chance they can lose. No one's gone undefeated in a season since 1976. So why weren't the police ready for this sort of thing to happen in a town where it's a bubble? It's only a couple of blocks that you have to basically close off and say, okay, you're taking your party somewhere else. But instead, it happens. And as Rick pointed out, as we were previewing this little segment, it also happens where the winning team is involved as well. Uh, we, we looked it up during the break, and one of the biggest rides of all time was when the Steelers beat the Cardinals for their sixth Super Bowl ring, and there was $200,000 uh, worth of damage, not in Phoenix, oh no, in Pittsburgh. So you get the feeling that this isn't even about sports and winning or losing anymore. This is another reason to party, Heather right. Hansen. I, absolutely, they it is. Like they were partying. Yeah, but that's you know it's unacceptable behavior. I yeah. mean, it's causing damage to their own communities. You know, anytime you talk about riots, whether it be as major as Ferguson or as minor as this, it's you're causing damage to your own communities, your own Let's jobs. Let's just put this into perspective. Compared with Europe, especially Britain, <laughs> oh, yeah. 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 I mean, our. Our rowdy fans are nothing compared, compared to, to the soccer fans. riots. Yeah, yeah, they burned it's down true. whole cities. Anyway, when we come back, it's yay or nay. This is the Daily Wrap only on Newsmax.